Reminder to athletes, as you make your way to the stage to collect your awards tonight, uh, please use the aisles and work your way to the stairs. We want to avoid using the ramps. They're actually very steep. Welcome to tonight's Winter Sports Awards. Uh, thank you all for being here. And at this time, I'd like to invite uh, our Rochester principal, Adam Strasser, to the stage. I'm honored to be able to begin this evening by recognizing our scholar athletes. I take pride in recognizing the student athlete for academic achievement for something off the field of play. As you all know here tonight, there are great demands placed on our student athletes both during competition and during the school day. It is my pleasure to recognize this year's winter scholar athletes who have not only met the high requirements set by their coaches, but also excelled in the classroom. Athletes, please stand as we recognize this winter's scholar athletes. Please hold your applause till everyone from each sport is standing. From the cheerleading team, Callie Adams, Alexis Agnew, Jade Calvert, Kiana Kennedy, Olivia Jennings, McKenna Ritter, Alyssa Solis, Trisha Timmons, Brittany Walker, and Terry Walker. From the wrestling team, Jade Calvert, Alex Davis, Zane Gilbreth, Kinley Lingenfelter, Aaron Orr, Otto Sherbandi, Alyssa Solis, Deshaun Whitfield, Micah Whitfield, and Josh Wooten. From girls swimming, Renee Bickle, Michaela Brubaker, Kennedy Campbell, Emma Feldman, Olivia Harris, Maria Hunting, Hashmat Mashiana, Abby McCarter, Madison Meyer, Sue Ellen Meyer, Karen Nelson, Nikki Ponce, Caitlin Robison, Sadie Rood, Madeline Sailors, Amanda Sager, Katie Schaller, Sydney Scobie, Adrian Shepard, Nicole Spencer, Emily Tyler, Kelsey Tyler, and Morgan Tyler. On the boys' swim team, Jace Bixler, Mason Brady, Adam Brown, Kyle Johnson, Wesley Meyer, Lorenzo Modiano, Chaz Nelson, Travis Neust, Tanner Powell, Eli Pugh, Joshua Rood, Jeffrey Rupert, and Isaac Smith. From the girls' basketball team, Emma Dahlquist, Courtney Gast, Allie Harsh, Alexa Holland, Katherine Hughes, Allie Larkin, Becky Malchow, Kennedy Musselman, <laughs> Megan Nile, Karina Peterson, Sydney Robison, Morgan Ruff, Maddie Shively, Keaton Stasiak, and Min Avu. <laughs> From the boys' basketball team, Brett Abbott, Gavin Bennett, Cody Dennis, Jacob Good, Alec Holland, Wilson Lee, A.J. Knotts, Ben Perez, Gary Plummer, Jerry Plummer, and Austin Utter. Next, we would like to recognize the Academic All-TRC winners. The academic all-conference team has been recognized by the conference athletic directors since 2002. To receive the honor, any athlete in any IHSAA sport must meet the following criteria. He or she is a junior or senior, has a minimum of a 3.4 GPA on a four-point scale, and a class rank in the top 30% for an honorable mention certificate, has a minimum of a 3.8 GPA and a class rank in the top 15%, for a first team all TRC academic medallion. Please come to the stage to accept this award. This winter's academic all conference honorable mention winners are in wrestling, Otto Sherbandi.
in girls swimming, Michaela Brubaker and Morgan Tyler. In boys basketball, Gavin Bennett and A.J. Knotts. This year's Winter Academic All-Conference First Team Medallion recipients are in wrestling, Micah Whitfield. In girls swimming and diving, Kennedy Campbell, Emma Feldman, Livy Harris, and Katie Schaller. In boys swimming and diving, Jace Bixler, Wesley Meyer, Tanner Powell, and Eli Pugh. In girls basketball, Alexa Holland, Allie Larkin, Becky Malko, and Keaton Stasiak. In boys basketball, Wilson Lee and Ben Perez. Congratulations, athletes. You truly represent RHS well. Thank you to the coaches and parents for supporting and helping your athletes excel in the classroom as well. I apologize to my coaches in advance. I'm so short I can't get to the uh, microphone if it's on the podium, so I have to improvise here. Uh, good evening. It's a pleasure to be with you tonight and to have the opportunity to publicly recognize our athletes for their contributions to their teams, to their school, and to their community. Uh, prior to announcing the selections for individual awards, I would like to point out a few team accomplishments and recognize some milestones set by our RHS winter athletes. I'll begin with wrestling. Uh, two wrestlers earned TRC championships at 132 pounds, Aaron Orr, and a heavyweight Dan, the Danimal, Clarky, Clark, Flapjack, hashtag trucks. <laughs> All real nicknames for Dan. Congratulations to regional qualifiers Justin Riston, Drew Sailors, Deshaun Whitfield, and Michael Whitfield. A special congratulations to Dan Clark, who took the incredible leap from JV to semi-state qualifier in one season. Thanks and congratulations to Aaron Orr for representing Rochester in the IHSAA state finals 
And finally, a special uh, recognition from Michael Whitfield and Otto Shibandi, who were named to the Senior Academic All-State Team. Congratulations, wrestlers. And uh, saving the best uh, for last, Otto, congratulations also for being a regional qualifier. In swimming and diving, uh, the inclusion of Maconaqua in the Three Rivers Conference uh, membership made the 2015-16 the first season in which the sport officially became one in which swimmers and divers could earn conference honors. The girls team became the first in the TRC to earn a, a conference championship. Yeah. Individual TRC champs for the girls included Kennedy Campbell in the 100 backstroke, Abby McCarter in the 200 IM and 100 breaststroke, the 200 medley relay team of Emma Feldman, Abby McCarter, Maddie Sailors, and Katie Schaller, the 200 free relay team of Emma Feldman, Maria Hunting, Abby McCarter, and Maddie Sailors, and Adrian Shepard in the 500 free. Individual champs for the boys include Eli Pugh in the 200 free and the 500 free, Jeffrey Rupert in the 100 backstroke, and the 400 free relay team of Jace Bixler, Wesley Meyer, Eli Pugh, and Jeffrey Rupert. The girls did very well in the postseason as well, with Abby McCarter reaching the IHSA state finals in the 100 backstroke, pardon me, breaststroke, Maddie Sailors reaching in the 50 free, and, and the 400 free relay team of Emma Feldman, Abby McCarter, Maddie Sailors, and Katie Schaller qualifying. The boys set their share of state qualifications uh, as well. Uh, Jace Bixler, Wes Meyer, Mason Brady, and Jeffrey Rupert qualified in the 200 medley relay by winning sectional. And uh, teammate Eli Pugh qualified for the 200 free and 500 free and made the cut to compete on the Saturday uh, portion of the tournament. Congratulations to the swimmers. Uh, the girls basketball team won sectional, a sectional championship for the second consecutive season and went on to the regional finals. Alexa Holland and Becky Malko, Malko earned all TRC first team honors and Allie Larkin was named honorable mention all TRC. Uh, special congratulations to Holland who scored her 1,000th point this season and after the season was named to Hoosier Basketball Magazine's top 60 senior list. For the boys, Gavin Bennett and Al Holland earned all TRC honorable mention. Congratulations to our basketball players. And now we'll begin our awards presentation. The order in which we'll present will be cheerleading, followed by wrestling, followed by girls swimming, boys swimming, girls basketball, and boys basketball. Our first awards for the night are for team captains. Uh, the definition in our handbook for team captains reads as follows. Leadership is often the intangible that is missing on those teams that never seem to fulfill their potential. At the same time, it is often very evident on those teams that rise to championship levels. Team captains must serve as leaders, as recruiters, as assistant coaches with the younger players, and as positive role models for all team members. Well, I got the um, unlucky draw to present again this, this year, so that's all right. Um, first and foremost, I want to thank all the coaches up here. Um, I might be the only program where I have to make sure that I'm not in someone's gym space, um, making sure that um, the swimmer or two that's on the squad is at um, the game instead of the practice. And I appreciate um, all of them willing to be able to be flexible with us and um, communication is great between us. So thank you for that. Um, captains, I have six. Whenever you have a squad the size of 30 and your season runs from August until March, um, I need six. So uh, for the boys, we have Uriah Milner, Austin Shashelsky, Brennan Sutton. For the, boy, or for the girls, we have Carol Morris, Alexis Agnew, and Brittany Walker.
We had two really great guys this year as our captains. Uh, we, all of our awards uh, we put to a team vote, coaches vote, uh, wrestlers vote. Uh, overwhelming majority this year. Um, like I said, two great guys. They both lead in different ways. Uh, the short guy, well, they're both kind of short, but the really short guy, uh, he he's, leads in a very grouchy, um, demanding kind of way. Um, anybody that knows him knows he's just a grouch during wrestling season. Um, and then the other guy just leads with hard work and effort every single day, good attitude, coming to coming to practice, ready to go. Um, like I said, just two two really great kids. Enjoyed coaching them, enjoyed having them as part of our program this year. Uh, Aaron Orr and Otto Sherbandi. Um, we had some great leadership from some older kids on the team this year. Um, pretty much everything that Mr. Holt said sums up what captains are for us. Um, for the girls, we had Morgan Tyler, Katie Schaller, and Emma Feldman. And for the boys, we had Eli Pugh, Jay Spixler, Wesley Meyer, and Tanner Powell. I've been doing this a year or two, or yeah, a year or two, and I don't think I've ever had a senior class do it any better. On and off the court, the high standards they held themselves, not, I don't think I've had a more competitive group, and uh, I'm just so proud that uh, they've had a lot of success on the court, and they're a big part of it. Uh, our seniors, Allie Larkin, Becky Malco, Alexa Holland, Keaton Stasiak. I may need to kneel down. No, we're good. Um, we had three team captains this year. Uh, we were we were blessed with five seniors, um, and out of those five, we had three that um, had been with our program, doing a lot throughout the uh, their their entire career. Uh, each guy leads a different way for us. A um, couple of them are very quiet, and one one that's more vocal uh, throughout the year. And their their leadership styles, what they've meant to this program, and what they've meant to me personally, as far as is putting um, Rochester basketball back in the direction it needs to go. That means a lot. Our team captains this year were Alec Holland, Brett Abbott, and Wilson Lee. Our next award is for Most Promising Athlete. It's important that coaches continue, uh, continue to work hard and recruit the best possible athletes for their sport. 
it's especially gratifying when a coach gets a young man or young lady in their freshman or sophomore year that show the talent, the potential, the, t the determination, and the positive attitude to be a real champion in their high school career. Hopefully the awards earned tonight as most promising will serve to encourage these athletes on to bigger and better seasons in their RHS athletic careers. Um, this cheerleader came to us from um, kind of ironic recruiting wise um, from Culver Academy. Um, things there, I guess, were up to where she wanted to be. So she came to Rochester High School again. Um, she was at the middle school previously. And um, that goes to Olivia Jennings. That is our most promising. All right, so here's the deal. We got six freshmen on our team. And when I put this up for a vote for most promising, they all got votes. Five of them, or sorry, three of them tied. And then two of them were one vote behind. Uh, my wife will tell you I'm very bad at making decisions. Um, I thought long and hard about it. Uh, I chose one. Uh, I went back to Ryan a week later and said uh, I need to do two. Uh, and then uh, last week, right before awards, I said I need to do three. Um, made out of money, I get it. Um, almost changed my mind a, a fourth time, but I, I thought maybe he'd get mad at me. So we're given three tonight. Uh, these three go out to uh, three freshmen. Um, as I said, we've got six freshmen on our team, and they're all going to do very well for us. They're going to lead us, uh, and uh, we're going to do some great things here in the future with these guys. Uh, but our most promising tonight are Justin Riston, Drew Sailors, and Matt Lease. Our most promising girl this year is a freshman. She is not new to competitive swimming, but she improved a significant amount this year. Um, this young lady has such a great work ethic and heart for swimming. I have no doubt she will continue to improve over the next three years. She made it back to sectional finals in two events, and she earned a spot on the top relay at sectionals, which is a pretty big deal for a freshman. I was always so impressed by her because no matter how fast or slow her times were, after every race, she came over to the coaches with a smile on her face and asked how she could improve. She was constantly flagging down coaches during practice, asking how she could improve what we were working on. This is the kind of athlete a coach wants, one who's always looking for ways to improve and has a good attitude about it. Adrienne Shepard. Our most promising boy is also a freshman. Uh, this young man made incredible improvements this year and I have no doubt he will continue to work hard and we'll see many more improvements over the next three years. I can honestly say every time he dove in the pool, he worked his absolute hardest. Whether it was in a meet or a practice, he pushed himself. <laughs> what did I say? <laughs> All right, whatever I said. <laughs> Okay, moving on. He has some pretty lofty goals for the rest of his high school swim career, but I have no doubt he will do everything he absolutely can to try and reach those goals. This young man not only put his whole heart into everything he did this, I guess I'll just have to watch it on RTC. I don't know. <laughs> All right, moving on. 
Um, anyway, this young man not only put his whole heart into everything he did this season, he taught all of us something along the way. He taught the other kids how to be a better teammate, and he taught me how to be a better and more patient coach. He has come a very long way since I've known him, and I am excited to watch him continue to grow up over the next three years. Isaac Smith. All right, come on up here, Emma. Um, Emma Dawkins is our most promising athlete, and I've talked a lot about her role this year and how she's just barely scratching the surface and has played a big role down the stretch, especially uh, when Keaton got injured, and, and I think she's got a lot of great things ahead of her. But the other thing I wanted to do is recognize the kind of person she is. Um, those of you that know me, one of my favorite sayings is represent the R, and that just simply means bring out the best in you so that Rochester can bring out the best in our school. And I just wanted to highlight what Emma has to do and what she does and the type of person she is. Uh, she's, I think I speak for all the people on stage. We know we all want multi-sport athletes and we all want our kids to be involved in other things. Uh, but she takes that to a whole nother level. She's a three-sport varsity athlete. She's involved in the play in both the fall and spring. She's been in several choir competitions and she's been recognized for all-state choir. So when you think you're tired because you've been home for a practice, She's also a top 10 student. So when you think you're tired because you, know, you don't want to go to practice or you don't want to really work, Emma's probably doing something else to get herself better. So I just want everybody to join and applaud me for our most promising athlete, Emma Dahlquist. Okay, our, uh, our most promising athlete uh, for the boys basketball program, uh, this individual started off the year a little rough, first game of the year. He um, fractures his left finger, into, or pinky finger, uh, so severely that it actually rotates and twists counterclockwise in his hand. And he practiced for two days with that finger and said, hey, I think I need to go have this checked out. It's not right. So um, he set out for six or eight games, came back, uh, started dressed a little bit of varsity for us and uh, kind of solidified himself as, as a guy that played some significant minutes down the road for us with the um, free throw with 1.7 seconds against Cast and to seal, seal the win uh, for us this year. So pressure situations, there we go. I just did it. You're good. And um, <laughs> pressure situations, this guy kind of strives under it. And for freshmen, that's, that's impressive. And we're excited for the next three years that we have this young man, Brady Perez. Our next award is for Most Improved Athlete. One of the goals of every sports program is to continue to strive for improvement, whether that means a better free throw percentage, trimming seconds off a race, or even a better attitude or approach to the sport. Improvement is often the key to many of the su successes of our athletic programs. This award goes to a girl who, when she came last April to try out, she was like, well, I don't know if I'm really cut out for this. I was like, oh, just stick around, you'll be fine. And she's like, well, you know, I've only done cheer um, competitively for basically maybe a year up in Plymouth, and, you know, I can't get a hold of the dances and this and that. So through some help and some guidance and um, over the course of the season, um, she was able to get things together, improve, um, probably the most um, out of everybody on the squad, and that is Tricia Timmons.
All right, so our most improved is a little different um, this year. Um, we uh, I decided, uh, I don't know, I emailed you sometime in January, February, and uh, said we needed to do something a little different for this most improved award. Um, this year and uh, all years after, this award will be named after uh, Jordan Schaefer um, as our most improved award. Jordan Schaefer Memorial Award. Uh, as you know, we lost Jordan last year in a car accident. Uh, Jordan and I had a great relationship, and um, we, uh, he's the epitome of improvement. Um, not just over a season, not just over a month, but over a lifetime. And, um, <clears throat> excuse me. <coughs> it's fitting that uh, the guy who's going to get this award uh, was a young man who, as a freshman, didn't even want to wrestle. Um, talked him into coming out, and he actually refused. I've never had a kid do this before, but he refused to wrestle in any matches as a freshman. Um, last year, um, he, he wrestled JV Forrest, did a, did a nice job. Uh, and then this year, as a first-year wrestler, ends up uh, one match, had it not been for injury, one match from going to the state tournament. Um, it's only fitting that uh, it's a heavyweight that's going to win this first award in Jordan's name. Um, he's not here. Uh, he had surgery yesterday on his torn MCL and, and cartilage, so he's at home healing. Um, they have direct TV, so they can't watch this tonight. Um, but in his place, um, I'm going to do something that's going to probably embarrass his coach, which is Coach Peck. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, coach Beck probably... As far as improvement goes, excuse me. Had more to do with Jordan and Dan Clark's improvement um, than any coach I've had in my program. So on behalf of Dan, Damick's gonna come up tonight and accept this award. Our most improved girl this year is a diver. She came in with a background in gymnastics. This can often be beneficial in diving, but also comes with hard habits to break. Because of her willingness to try new things and perfect them as she went along, she started out the season um, barely breaking 100 points in a meet and ended the season almost at 200 points. Her first 11 dive meet, dive meet was the Oak Hill Invitational. This was definitely her aha moment of the season and she never looked back from there. We are excited to see what she will bring to the team over the next three years. Madison Meyer. Our most improved boy this year is a sophomore. He started swimming competitively last year. Partway through this year, he figured out that it was kind of fun to race and even more fun to sometimes win those races. Last year at sectionals, he did not even make it back to swim at sectional finals. This year, he not only made it back to sectional finals in two events, he also, also earned a spot swimming on one of our top relays. That relay happens to be the relay that finished first and made it to state. To go from not making it to sectional finals one year to making it to state the next year is a phenomenal accomplishment. We are excited to see what this young man will accomplish the next two years as he continues to work as hard as he did this season. Mason Brady.
Our most improved winner uh, is her own toughest critic and probably doesn't think she had that outstanding of a year, but she did. And she improved, shooting numbers improved. Um, she got a little tougher, leadership improved. And I think that was the big part. And I think um, she just continued to grow as a person. And I think she's really um, set herself up and, and I'm looking forward to what she accomplishes down the road. Allie Larkin. Most improved for um, boys basketball. We had um, two individuals receive this award. Uh, the first first young man uh, started the year off playing a little bit of both. JV varsity for us. Um, just kind of had a, a breakthrough game and uh, then started for us. Led us in scoring for about half the year and just seemed to blossom uh, with a low post area. Um, and, and made that stride, made that jump from the JV uh, halftime, part-time uh, to a varsity starter is something that we haven't had happen uh, here in, in quite some time. Uh, the other individual we had, as far as most improved player, and I think I'll remember this conversation for a long time, is um, probably the quietest guy we've ever had in the program, not, not saying a word in practice, um, in locker room, quiet, just a very a, um, calming presence to us. And we asked him, we said, Wilson, what's the difference between last, this year and the last three years? And Wilson looked at me and said, Coach, I finally feel comfortable. And so uh, that, that kind of just solidified that most improved player. Um, and we've got two of them. One's Ben Perez and the other one's Wilson Lee. Our next award is for mental attitude. The coach's favorite person uh, may be a, the best way to describe this award. And it's important to remember why these athletes are the coach's favorites. Uh, some reasons, they're always leaders in off-season conditioning and weight workouts. They always listen and try to do what is right. They always hustle during all practices as well as in contests. They always try to provide leadership and be a positive example for the underclassmen in the program. Talent and potential are not needed for the mental attitude award winner. They need to have a never say, never say die attitude coupled with a positive outlook on life. First, thank you, Mrs. Whitfield. I'll miss that next year, but you can come back and do it. Um, mental attitude award, this kid, um, no matter what the circumstances were, um, family life or, or whatever, he would come in with a positive attitude, um, acted like nothing, nothing was wrong, even though when I, I knew that there was stuff going on um, behind the scenes, but it didn't um, phase him. And um, the mental attitude award goes to Brendan Sutton. Our mental attitude award uh, goes to young man. He's a freshman. Um, don't, just a great kid, uh, straight A student. Uh, works his tail off. Uh, 
always at the workouts. You can tell he's disappointed when, uh, you know, if he's missing or if he if he runs in late, uh, and just always trying to to do his best. He's a he's a coach pleaser. Uh, wants to do well. Um, wants to wants to be one of the guys that's that's a leader. Uh, and as I said at the beginning, he's just a just a real good kid. Great personality. Always ready to go. Uh, always a smile on his face. That's Zane Gilbreth. We have two mental attitude uh, winners for the girls team. The first is a diver. Um, from the first day of practice, this young lady never stopped trying or working as hard as she possibly could. Day in and day out for the first month of the season was a struggle from spending multiple weeks just working on her approach. Um, she watched her teammates begin to learn more difficult dives and compete in meets and never once did she complain about why she was not yet achieving those things. She kept encouraging them. She did not compete in her first meet until almost Christmas. Once she did, her positive outlook and attitude never changed. Caitlin Robinson. Our second winner for the girls team is a swimmer and is also a junior. She has worked so hard for the past three years. She has overcome many things that could have pushed her to the point of giving up, but she took all of those things in stride and kept her head high. At the start of the season, we sat the girls down and talked about all the things we could do this season. We talked about how our goals were to win conference and sectionals. This young lady bought into these goals 100% from the moment we said them until the season ended. She spent so much time thinking through and trying to figure out how we could meet these goals. I don't think she ever once thought we would not do it. I remember at the conference meet, we were down by eight points with only two events to go. I was starting to think we weren't going to win. I was standing by myself, not really talking to anybody. She came up, stood right next to me and said, coach, we're going to win. She did everything she possibly could to meet these goals. And she also made sure her teammates believed in themselves and did everything they could do too. Emma Feldman. for the boys team. Uh, this young man has been on the team for four years. He is not an athlete that ever got his name in the paper or broke a school record. He's an athlete who was always the first to practice, helped the freshmen put the lane lines in, made sure all of his teammates had a ride home and always did everything the coaches asked him to do. He was a leader in the weight room and in the pool. He might not have been the fastest, but he was easily one of the hardest working boys on the team. Going into the season, he had a goal of earning a spot on the top relay for sectionals. Every time he swam a race, he wanted to know what his time was and wanted to know the times of his teammates to see how he measured up. When it came down to the end of the season, he was our fifth fastest guy. He swam on the relays at prelims um, at sectionals to qualify the relays and ended up being an alternate for Saturday. He listened to the coach's decisions and never once questioned us that we were making the right decision. With his work ethic and perseverance, he will absolutely grow up to do something great. Tanner Powell. Uh, Tanner was actually at a college visit today and he is not back yet. We were hoping he would be, but he should be here later. So. <laughs> For boys and girls basketball, the Mental Attitude Award is named after Nick Patterson. Um, who a former Rochester basketball player and baseball player, I'm not sure if he played football or not, but um, 
who gave his life while serving our country over in the Middle East. So I got I knew Nick when he was a student here, and that, that makes it one of my favorite awards, maybe probably my favorite award. Um, our Medal Attitude Award winner gave us our heart, gave us our guts, um, and, uh, you know, we weren't the same when she wasn't on the floor. And um, I think she just epitomizes everything that this program is about. I don't know that there's ever been a player who wearing, wearing the jersey meant as much as it did for her or me. Um, and she will always be my all-time favorite Lady Zebra, Keaton Stasiak. Our Mental Attitude Awards, we have two. Um, these two individuals started the year off for us. Uh, one couldn't play until Christmas. The other one uh, tore his ACL, last game of football. And to watch these guys struggle in practice and fight through injury in rehab and spend hours and hours with Christina icing to give back so they could play and be on the floor uh, without just taking a knee and, and stepping out uh, through this year, which is a tough year for us anyways. It means a lot to me. Uh, exemplifies what mental attitude and mental toughness is. They never once complained about their injuries or what, what life dealt them. And I know inside it was killing them. Um, it was, was bothering me that I couldn't fix it. Uh, but these two guys uh, fought through injury all year and uh, gave 100% practice and um, are, are great mo role models for our younger guys going forward. Alec Holland and Brett Abbott. Next award is for the most valuable athlete. The most valuable, uh, the most valuable athlete is defined in our handbook as the person who means the most to the team. The most valuable athlete is not necessarily the most talented player, but is the player that contributes the most to the program. The most valuable athlete must provide leadership and also exhibit outstanding skill in the sport. I believe that one way to determine who the most valuable athlete is is to simply ask the question, where would this team have been without this person? Uh, if you. Would like another definition, Coach Hughes? First person you love to see if they're on the bus. <laughs> Take it from a guy who's had some bus issues before. <laughs> Most valuable athlete. The MVP would be Oh, when I came into this program four years ago and took it over with Allie, you know, all the help that she does and all the tremendous work that she does. Um, this is one of the girls that we relied heavily on. And it, like the saying, Rome wasn't built in a day, neither is the program. And four years into this, we're finally getting things to where it needs to be. And that MVP sticking through things, helping us out, getting us um, competitive whenever we go to a game. Um, the minute we get off the bus, it's on. Yes, we are not technically a sport, but that doesn't mean whenever we show up, we don't show up to show you out. And that would be Alexis Agnew.
We have co-MVPs this year um, for two really uh, different reasons, uh, you know, polar opposites. Uh, our, our first MVP, um, you know, is a testament to three sport athletes. Uh, he plays golf. This, this is a weird. This is a weird combination, folks. He plays golf. He wrestles, and he plays soccer. Um, that's really weird. That just doesn't happen. Uh, most wrestlers don't play golf and don't play soccer. Um, but you know, I, th I think if you talk to any of those coaches, they would say um, he's one of the most important kids on their team. Uh, he, he's got a great work ethic, great personality. Uh, he's a little fire plug, uh, likes to get after it, not afraid to mix it up. Uh, I think those traits carry over to, to all three fields, um, fields of play. Um, and he's a kid who is a testament to wrestling because he was able to do all those other things and still make time for our sport. He didn't have to live it 24 seven to be good at it. Uh, he had some talent, which helped. Um, but at the same time, he didn't have to beat himself up every day to, to be the best he could be. Um, he was just very consistent over a long period of time. Uh, our first MVP is Aaron Orr. That was pretty weak, Mrs. Whitfield. <laughs> Our second MVP, um, a lot of ways to describe this young man. I think the best way would be this. Uh, I've been coaching for 20 years, um, and I've coached some really good kids, uh, but I've never coached a harder worker in my life, ever. Um, if I, if I, you know, decided, hey, I'm going to leave Rochester and I'm going to go someplace else and, and, you know, they said, hey, we want you to start a wrestling program from scratch and you got to choose one person to be your leader, one person to start this program with, it's Otto Sherbondi. We have co-MVP winners for the girls team this She was uh, second in the 50 free and the 100 butterfly at conference. She was also part of two relay teams that won first place at conference. She was part of two record setting relays at sectionals as well as broke two individual records. She broke her own 50 free record from last year as well as a 35 year old record in the 100 freestyle. She was the anchor of the 400 freestyle relay team that made it to state. She also made it to state in the 50 freestyle, Maddie Sailors. Our second MVP is also a sophomore. She was the only girl in the entire conference to win four blue ribbons at the conference swim meet. She was part of two relay teams that won first place at the conference, and she also got first place in the 100 free and the 100 breaststroke. She was part of two record-breaking relays at sectionals. The 400 freestyle relay won first place, making it to state. She finished third in the 200 IM, first in the 100 breaststroke, making it to state. She also broke a 30-year-old school record in the 100 IM, as well as the school record in the 100 breaststroke. She also, also finished the season with more points than any other girl on the team and had the second highest points for the entire team, Abby McCarter.
Hey, Tanner. <laughs> Our MVP for the boys team uh, this season accomplished more than any athlete I've ever coached. This young man as a freshman did not make it out of sectional prelims, but made it back to state finals as a senior. As he completes his high school swimming career, he's walking away with his name on our record board four times. He was part of two relay records. He also holds the school record in the 200 and the 50 freestyle. He or Rini could probably tell me, but he wrote, broke and rebroke those records so many times, I lost track of how many times he broke them. He could probably write some equation about it, though. <laughs> Along with the school records, he now holds our sectional record in the 200 and 500 freestyle. He was also the first to make it to the state and swim in finals on Saturday for our school since 1980. There have only been three other swimmers in Rochester school history to make it to state finals. The list goes on and on with the things he has accomplished. Words cannot express how proud we are of him. This young man is a perfect example in all aspects of life of how having your heart, your mind, and your attitude in the right place, you can accomplish way more than anyone can imagine. You will be greatly missed. Eli Pugh. Our dynamic duo, Becky and X, uh, repeat winners for us without a doubt. Um, just leading us for the last few years, everything we could possibly want. And, and the thing that was neat about this year is, you know, the last couple of years, uh, X has been our leader on offense and Becky's kind of emerged in our leader on defense. But this year it was kind of neat because Becky's offense, she took more upon herself and all, her offense grew and X played a little bit better defense. A um, little, little bit. <laughs> uh, and, uh, you know, all the way to the end, you know, when, when that uh, notorious Rochester injury bug hit us again, like it did everybody else, but for us in the regional, right before the regional championship, there those two were out competing their guts out, trying to find a way to keep us hanging there with LCC. And, and the game didn't go the way we wanted to, obviously, but uh, even as I go back and watch that game, just the tremendous respect I have for them for the way they competed as they all did, but for those two knowing as seniors that, you know, they were the last two seniors kind of standing that night, but uh, the last two to try to go out and make a play and I'll forever be in debt to them because, again, the theme of the speech here, multi-sport athletes, these are two Division One softball players and um, the time and effort that they put in to get to that sport is amazing. But the fact, the fact that they put the time and effort in our sport to be all conference and it's not just showing up when we're doing leagues and open gyms. It's the time on their own. I don't even know how many hours. I don't even know how much they know I appreciate of it. But um, they could, if they decided they didn't want to play softball, I could find them a, a, a college basketball scholarship, no doubt, because I've had coaches call me since the season's been over. That's how good they are, and that's how much they mean to us. Uh, and I appreciate the efforts of Becky Malko and Alexa Holland.
we have two for most valuable player. Um, one, led us in rebounding, led us in scoring uh, all year. Came to coaches about midway through last year and said that um, he um, missed, his, missed his calling and needed to come back. He had something to prove. And um, nine, nine and a half points, almost seven rebounds a game this year uh, was TRC honorable mention. Uh, the other young man is a, a two-time TRC uh, first-team all-selection. Averaged just a little bit under under 10 points this year, which is way below uh, his efforts. Um, but uh, given his, his injury circumstance, we, uh, we were lost without him when he was not on the floor. And um, our two MVPs this year are Gavin Bennett and Alec Holland. In just a moment, we'll split up for individual sport awards. Uh, at that time, wrestling will move to the library. Boys basketball will stay here in the auditorium. Girls basketball will be in the cafeteria, swimming in the main gym, and cheerleading will be in the Digicom room. That's room 115. I do want to remind all those who won captains and the other awards in here uh, to meet at Zebby right after this so uh, Mr. Kenny can get your uh, photograph from the Sentinel. And please do that before you go to your... Uh, team meetings. Um, I don't want to dismiss without some closing comments. Uh, the first one that comes to mind, uh, you heard a lot of coaches stress this tonight, but some of the most excellent athletes that we, uh, that we paid tribute here to tonight don't just play one sport. Um, they're multi-sport athletes and they give their all to the school year round. Uh, they work their tails off. Uh, for us, and I've got to be honest. If we don't have more kids who are willing to, uh, to, you know, buck the trend that you hear about in specialization, and to come out and try to do multiple sports and stay involved, we'll uh, really struggle to compete here at Rochester. It's with these kids who who can excel and bring their gifts to uh, multiple seasons that we really do well. Um, so I encourage you all. If you're not doing a spring sport, it might not be too late to to beg a coach into uh, getting on the team and uh, to see if you can continue uh, your contributions throughout the rest of this, uh, the school year. I do want to give some thank yous, and this is the part that I, always, uh, that I always fear a little bit because I'm afraid I'll forget someone. I forgot poor Chris Holm two seasons in a row and then he left. Uh, so if I forget you, it's nothing personal. Uh, but uh, here, here are some people that I really want to thank. Uh, first of all, I want to thank our athletes. Uh, they give us countless hours of effort. Uh, they, they work on bettering their work ethic, their leadership, their mental toughness, and those are some uh, important lessons to learn through athletics, and that's what really makes athletics worthwhile. I thank our coaches. Uh, thanks to Coach Brown, Coach Reaney there in the back. Thank you, Coach Katie Sanchez, Coach Shelby Seisinger, uh, Coach Clint Gard and his staff, especially Derek Holloway, Zeke Weiss, and Dave McBeck. Uh, Thanks to Tony Stasiak, Randy Wynn, Bethany Sewell, uh, Rob Malco. Thanks to Coach Ryan Holt and his staff, Dan Bailey, Sean Kelly, Justin Bach, Joe McCarter, and Wade Langley. Uh, special thanks to uh, Dryland Brad Weaver. Uh, thank, thank all you coaches for your efforts in advancing the characteristics that we want to see in our student athletes. Uh, also, thanks to the families of our athletes for the many modifications you make to your lives in order to make uh, sacrifices that ensure that your sons and daughters can represent us here. Um, I want to thank the families of our coaches. Um, you know, I know the kind of sacrifices that uh, my family's had to make for me and that all our coaches' families make in order to let them uh, pursue their, uh, you know, their quest with their athletes. Um, I want to thank, we have so many volunteers that work for us throughout the winter, and uh, we really could not really couldn't afford to do things financially here at Rochester without all these people who help us out. Uh, I want to say thank you to Christina Hughes. She works diligently to ensure the well-being of our student athletes.
I want to thank uh, Shelly Gibson and Brent Gibson. I want to thank Sandy Onifield, our new secretary, who's there in the back and, and doing a great job for us. I want to thank uh, Sue Cash for coming along and uh, helping us out this winter. Um, thanks to Jamie Bach, who does all kinds of work for us behind the scenes. Thanks to Skeeter Doherty, who takes care of the people who intimidate me at games. <laughs> thanks to Adam Strasser and Chris Kiesling. Uh, they're a really supportive bunch of administrators. They're very involved in athletics, and uh, they definitely see the value in athletics. Um, Chad Morgan, I don't know if Chad's here, but Chad does a heck of a lot of work for us. So does Terry Wooten. Thanks to uh, Kathy Easterday, to Rob Schaefer, Don King, Alan Sager, Brian Hooker. Those guys all help with our basketball games. Thanks to uh, Randy Wynn, who also, besides working as a girls coach, turns around and announces our boys' games. I uh, really want to thank our local media. We're blessed to have the kind of coverage we do. Uh, a lot of schools our size and in our area don't. Uh, at WROI, special thanks to Dave Musselman and uh, Brad Thomas. Thanks to the Sentinel, especially to Val, to Mike Kinney, and to Ed Taylor. At RTC, uh, thanks, first of all, for providing what you did for us tonight and for all the coverage throughout the year, especially to Scott Sager, Chris Messersmith, Libby Wojcik, and Dee Brown. Uh, they, they really do a uh, service for us. Uh, really special thanks. If you've seen some pictures of your students' uh, participating in sports, posted to social media. Uh, good chance they were taken by Paula Beeler, and she does that uh, just out of the kindness of her heart, and I really appreciate that. Another person who uh, does a lot of social media work for us, Stacey Shane Halls. I thank Lucas and Allison and our cheerleaders for their wonderful support. Um, thanks to Chris Brown and the folks at Rochester Glass for sponsoring our girls' basketball tourney. Thanks to the Winning Edge for their uh, years of sponsorship of our boys' holiday tourney. Uh, over at SWIM, I know I'm going to miss some people here, but thanks a lot to Rick Rupert and Penny Rupert who help out at all our meets. Christy Brooks and Shannon Shepard uh, really provide a lot of help there as well. I can't believe he's not here tonight. This could be a first. Uh, you talk about signs of the apocalypse, Josh Van Meter is not here. Folks, I'm worried, but thanks to Josh. Uh, he's part of my family throughout the school year. and. Uh, Man, he's, he's a lot of fun to have around. Uh, actually, check that. I know where he is. Special Olympics is getting ready to go to their sectional, so he's, he's actually practicing tonight. So uh, I really love having Josh around. Um, special thanks uh, to our Boosters Club. We had a Boosters meeting tonight. Uh, for those of you who are, are not members of the Boosters Club, I strongly uh, recommend you consider joining. Uh, without this organization, we would not be able to make it financially. Uh, being a booster is just a great way to help ensure a quality athletic experience for your kids. Um, if, you, if you're interested in being a member, just send me an email and I'll get you signed up to be part of that club. Um, again, special uh, thanks to all my parents and volunteers who helped in so many ways. We're blessed to have so many dedicated parents and supporters and staff members within uh, both this building and all our buildings in the corporation who just care about the betterment of our kids. Um, outside the auditorium, you'll find uh, evaluation sheets for your sports available. We'd love to have feedback to better the uh, athletic experiences for our athletes. Uh, they can be returned to the athletic office throughout the remainder of this week, or uh, you can slide them on my, under my door during spring break if, if need be. Um, again, last, the first and last thank you goes to the athletes. They, they put in all the hard work. Thank you for your dedication. Remember, it's a journey. It's not where you are. It's where you're going. And I know a lot of you are going to really good places. Uh, remember, if you didn't reach your goals this year, there are always new goals to be set and met. Set your goals high and don't be afraid to fail. Uh, as always, any mistakes, see me in my office tomorrow. And uh, we, are, we have very few awards that we're short on. Uh, and coaches have been alerted to those. Thank you all again. I really appreciate you having you here. Have a good night.